Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fighter Store. Connor the Destroyer, Ben. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Nice to see you again. I've got to say, this jacket... Go on, talk me through it. Uh, it's a bit rascal, Con. No, you're just upset you can't pull it off like me. True. So Very true. <laughs> um, we're here in Birmingham. I know you had a, a good meeting earlier with Charlie, um, Frank, Eddie, Tony, uh, your lawyer. Looking forward to good things now, coming forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always productive when all the team are able to catch up. Um, you know, we're looking at getting out twice this year before the year's up. So, you know, let that, let that take its course. Look, Con, we caught up a couple of weeks ago and obviously since then you were cleared and now obviously the British Boxing Board of Control uh, have appealed it, waited till the last minute. Eddie and Frank have made their comments regarding that whole thing. But as far as what Eddie and Frank have said to me is nothing changes. You can still fight. You can still get a licence to fight. Um, the plan is to get out twice this year and, and no stone unturned? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're confident in our position. I'm confident. Um, you know, clean nights always win and... And, you know, that's that. You know, we'll, we'll be back out before, twice before the end of the year. We'll let this take its course as well. You know, it's been lo loads of ups and downs throughout this whole process. But, listen, on the other side of adversity is greatness, man. Connor, you've been sparring, you've been in the gym. I know even back in Guadalajara you were staying ready. Um, it was a moment where I said to you, look, how long are you going to stay ready for before it gets too much? But now the sort of feeling is, is that there will be a fight date semi soon. But in terms of when you're training, when you're ready, I know you said to me three, four, five weeks. That's the plan, you're feeling fresh and ready? The reality is I was ready to go six months ago. You know, unfortunately, given everything that's going on, you know, it's just held me back a little bit. But, you know, it really is a minor blip in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, I'm 26 years young. So for me, it's just a matter of, you know, building up momentum again and, and getting out in the, the big domestic fights the public wants, capturing the world titles. You know, watching all Spence and Crawford, great fighters. Um, you know, I want to fall, fall into one of them. Um, you know, I put myself back in that position. You say two times this year. I asked you a couple of times prior. Um, would it ever be an easier touch for us? I think at the time you said no, but now speaking to you, would you like maybe a, a, an eight, ten rounder against sort of who knows who and then move on to a big fight? What's the plan? I'll leave that down to my team. Listen, I'll fight any man tomorrow. Um, you know, that's a given. So it's just about me getting back in the you know, top five in every governing body where I was at before. Um, and, you know, capturing one of them world titles are, you know, the massive domestic fights. If it's for you, it won't pass you. And, and that's where I'm at. So obviously it won't meant for me. What's coming to me is coming to me. In terms of going back into the big fights, all the names are out there. Uh, they all want to fight you. What's weird is we spoke and it's like since what's happened, it almost seems like people want to fight you more. Kel Brook's the one that's been teased time and time again. That would be one that the British pub boxing fans would absolutely love for you personally. Is that up the top of it? I mean, we obviously know what happened with the whole Eubank stuff, but if, or if he was to win, but Kel Brook, the one that you want the most? Listen, any of them. I don't shy away from a fight. I was willing to go up to 160. So, you know, 147 to 160, anyone can get it. I'm, I'm really not concerned. You know, I fight any man. I prepare for any man. You know, what's another man when I've been through what I've been through? You know, that's real struggle. That's real strength. That's real resilience. So for me, you know, fighting another man, any, anyone they put in front of me, I spar light heavyweights. I spar super middleweights. I spar middleweights. I spar, you know, light middleweights. You know, so it don't really bother me. You know, I got... I'm confident in, in my ability, I'm confident in what I do, I'm confident in my genetics, I'm confident in my power, my speed, my accuracy, my timing. You know, I'm 26 years young. As of where you're at now, you've spoke about sort of mentally the struggles that it's sort of been on you and how you have sort of regret the way that you've dealt with certain things, but the position that you're in now, is this the best you've been mentally in a long time? Oh, by far. I've probably been good for the past five months. I say it's hard. Listen, it's hard, man. What could, Sometimes life throws things at you, and you just got to, you know, you just got to deal with it. Like you can't, you can't run and hide from it. You just got to face it head on, and you know, deal with it. And, and that's what I've done. You know, thankfully I have the best people around me, the best team. I've got family, I've got friends, I've got sponsors. Um, you know, I've got all the closest people to me. You know, sponsors, you know, Everlast and Sports Direct. Um, you know, about me throughout this whole period. So for me, it's a blessing. And you know, if they ain't, if they ain't been solid, they've had to go. You know, and my team's been really close-knit and you know, they've really helped me through this. Well, how important is it for you to get back out fighting in the UK? We know that your fan base here is massive and it's something that's still growing now, despite the fact that you're not in the ring. The ideal sort of best-case scenario for you is to be fighting in front of your home fans. Joe, you know I owe it to, my, to the British public. I owe it to my supporters here. 
you know, although there's a fan base globally, for me it's really, I just feel like I owe it to the British supporters, man. Any teasers on when we could next see you at? Yeah, September, potentially. September, yeah, which is round the corner. And then, you know, in a mega fight in December, whoever that is, you know, all the names mentioned, any, any one of them can get it, you know. And I mean, some have turned it down already, but listen, the price is right. They may want to fight, but, you know, they don't want to, um, I don't know, some are in a position where they can't afford to get beat. We saw your scuffle with Kel Brook in Dublin. How personal is it between you and him, or is it strictly business? And what happens if you and Kel enter the ring together? It's always personal. When another man is trying to take food off my table, it's personal. So for me, it's, you know, a guy in there, and it's, it's always personal. It ain't, this ain't no business to me. This ain't no business. This is always personal. How does that fight go? Who? Kelbrook. Me and Kelbrook. There's a lot of things I'm thinking and a lot of things I shouldn't say, so I won't say. But my, ha my hand's raised at the end of it. Stoppage? Are you trying to draw it out of me? <laughs> of course I am. That's my job. <laughs> You're going fishing here. Listen, you know how it ends. How does it end? You tell me. I can't do that. No, of course you can. Come on. No, I can't. Well, why can't you? I can't do that. You know I can't do that. But why, um, why can't you do that? Because my job is to be an impartial interviewer, Connor. But it's an honest opinion, and you know boxing, don't you? Do yeah. you know boxing? Yeah. So it's an honest opinion. It's not but biased. I'm not allowed to give honest opinion. Oh, well, then I can't give honest opinions either. <laughs> um, just finally from me, you may not be able to give me an honest opinion on that one, given your answer. Um, Eubank Smith, a couple of weeks away now, or Smith Eubank too, even. Um, he's teamed up with Bomac this time round, but only on about four or five weeks' notice. What do you make of it all, some of the comments that have been made in the build-up? Is it going to be any different this time round? I haven't seen no hype around it, I haven't seen no build-up or, or anything, um, but I, I can't see Eubank getting past Smith. As much as I'd love Eubank to win, of course, um, as we've got our own feud that we need to settle, but the damage that's been done is done. And, you know, it's, it's only going one way. Just to pick up on that, sorry, I know I said one more. Um, we saw how emphatic it was last time. If it is the sort of same again, does that wipe out that fight for you? Is, and is, is the interest still there if he gets knocked out again? Listen, if the public want it, the public can get it. All this talk about me shying away from fighters or not, listen, I'm willing to go up to 160 to fight this man. So it's, what more can, what more can you want from a fighter? I'm willing to go up to 160 to entertain the fans. My natural weight's 147. So, listen, if the public want it, the public can get it. That's, that, that's it. If it's in demand, I will give it to the public. If the public want it, they can have it, no problem. Well, Ben, always a pleasure, my friend. Final message to fans and supporters? Just grateful for the continued support. Um, you know, obviously, it's been highs and lows and, you know, all this bit of adversity that I've been going through. So, just grateful to be back and thank you for everyone who supported me. Um, I wouldn't have made it where I am without you. So, listen, here come the big nights. Let's go. Always a pleasure, guys. Top man. Pleasure.